key to inclusion, the key to communities feeling that they are genuinely a part of the Australian community is employment. A range of other things as well, but the opportunity for people to have a job, earn a living and help raise their family in their new country, their adopted country of Australia, is critical. So job opportunities are just so important. Hi, Clyde Salomon Shirati here. Social inclusion is very important for new and emerging communities such as Africans. We know that Australia has a long history of welcoming communities and giving them opportunities to prosper. However, it is important to continue to look at uh, some of the issues that affect vulnerable and disadvantaged communities such as Africans to ensure that people are not falling through the cracks. Here at AMA, we decided that in this year, 2013, we will do everything we can to go to the highest level of authorities in the country to look at what is being done regarding the issues that affect the uh, settlement, integration, welfare and prosperity of African communities. Recently, we met with the Minister of uh, Health, Aging and Social Inclusion, Mr. Mark Butler, here in Melbourne. And we spoke to him about uh, social inclusion, in this first part of the interview, Mr. Butler talks about what his department is doing. In fact, he visited the Jesuit Social Services uh, in Melbourne to look at uh, uh, the success of uh, the NAB program, NAB, the national bank that is employing Africans, giving them an opportunity to have uh, uh, local qualification here in Australia to enable them to have some local experience here and assist them in their career uh, goals and perspectives. In the second part of the interview, Mr. Butler will speak about um, mental health and aging. However, that second part will be published in two weeks. Okay, Minister, we thank you very much for your time to Africa Media Australia. You visited the uh, Jesuit Social Services. Tell us why you made this visit. Well, I was here with Kath Botell, who's the Labor candidate for the federal seat of Melbourne. We're talking about a program, the Australian African Inclusion Program, that the Jesuit Social Services has been running now for a few years with the National Australia Bank. This is a program that the former Labor member for Melbourne, Lindsay Tanner, mm -hmm. was part of starting. And we met with a, a young woman, uh, Tanaka, from Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. uh, who's finished her community development uh, degree at La Trobe University and is now employed by the National Australia Bank and part of uh, the, I guess, the spreading the word process now to other young African kids who might be able to go through university and get uh, employment opportunities at one of Australia's largest companies, the National Australia Bank. Now this is just one program uh, with one company and one very sort of effective social welfare organisation by Jesuit Social Services, but it's changing the lives mm -hmm. of several dozen young African Australians every year. It's a great, it's a great model and I'd like to see it um, replicated by other companies, other social welfare organisations in other communities across Australia. And uh, why do you think this um, program has been quite successful? Well, it requires a commitment from the company, National Australia Bank, right up to the Chief Executive Officer, recognising the benefits for them as a company to have smart young people like Tanaka coming and working for them, but also the benefits for the broad Australian community, because we know that the key to inclusion, the key to communities feeling that they are genuinely a part of the Australian community mm -hmm. is employment. A range of other things as well, but the opportunity for people to have a job earn a living and help raise their family in their new country, their adopted country of Australia, is critical. So job opportunities are just so important. And um, you said uh, you would want to see it replicated. Um, do you think that should also happen in the public service rather than just in the uh, private service? Oh, I think government can be a leader in this area and I think we've got a lot to learn from the work that the Jesuit Social Services has been doing with the NAB. I know that Jesuit Social Services is spreading this uh, program to Sydney. They're looking at spreading it to Tasmania, hopefully to other parts of the country as well. And we can see it really snowball and provide good employment opportunities to lots of young people. We have built AMA as a platform for everyone. We want you to run your own segment about your own area of interest on AMA. If you have a business, a talent, or an idea, AMA is ready to work with you. 
This year, let us make AMA the biggest and the most influential media platform for Africans and for friends of Africans. So if you can, invite us to your community events. We have built a platform for you and we want you to use it. You can run your own segments in any area of your interest as long as it brings value to the African Australians here in Australia. Do you have ideas and talents you want everyone to see? African Media Australia is here for you. We're happy to promote those videos of yours. We're happy to promote your businesses. We're happy to promote those ideas that are inside of you. AMA is for you. Please contact us, African Media Australia. AMA is here for you and we're here to stay. Thank you. Bye. Is there, is there anything new that uh, we can expect uh, following this visit and, and what you, you, you're doing? Well, look, we're continuing to roll out programs that we've been funding now for a few years because we know that they're working. We know that, that um, they're providing good levels of service in communities that have strong representation from uh, other countries, including more recent waves of migration from Africa at work, provided you provide good intensive services in a way that local communities understand and respect. And uh, um, within African communities, there's been for quite some time now uh, a call for affirmative action because of the level of underemployment and unemployment. Uh, what your view, your view on that? Well, we don't have plans at the moment to introduce affirmative action. It's not something that we've traditionally done in Australia. Uh, what we do do is promote a strong culture of uh, anti-discrimination and we have very strong legal protections against discrimination on the basis of race, on the basis of religion, or on the basis of sex and a range of other areas. I'm confident that Australia has a very strong culture of equal opportunity that people, whether they're applying for a job or admission to a school or a university, are judged on their merits, not on their background, not on their race or their religion or their gender. Uh, and that's a very strong part of Australia's culture of a fair go. Well, while that may, that may sound good, but uh, many um, Africans um, have been saying for quite a while that uh, uh, it may not necessarily be working for them because uh, uh, we've had a lot of examples where people send their resumes uh, without getting anything when they change the name and then you know uh, they start getting calls. And I think that has happened from time to time in our in our history and there needs to be a strong effort by leaders in the business community, leaders in government as well as, as, well as community leaders from uh, African communities and others to encourage uh, Australian employers to to apply the Australian idea of a fair go. Now, if we need to do more work in having that conversation with the business community, we need to talk to the Human Rights Commission about what they're doing in discussions with the business community. Our government's up for that. Uh, so I, I certainly send that message to the African community that we are committed to there being a fair go in the jobs market where people's applications are regarded on their merits rather than their background. Um, does your department deal uh, directly in any way with um, African groups, for instance, or, or new and emerging groups, or, or you go through um, other um, service providers? Well, we, we do deal directly with African groups as well as groups from other uh, overseas communities. So in aged care, for example, an area I have responsibility for, uh, we will, we will um, put out advertisements for, for aged care grants uh, every year. There's, there, there's, a, there's a process open now. Last year, about two-thirds of those grants, uh, general aged care grants, two-thirds of them were given to uh, ethnic organisations uh, who were particularly focused on the aged care needs of their elders, including African organisations. Uh, in, in the area of m m mental health, we have a strong multicultural mental health program that's overseen nationally by a range of organisations who I know are engaging with African communities as they are others. Social inclusion instead of direct grants is really about making sure that all of the different government services 
are integrating well so that so that you as an individual or a family don't have to go to six or seven different government agencies to get different types of service the government is bringing all of those services together to, to give you a much more integrated joined up sort of service so that's what we're doing in social inclusion we're not we're not handing out whole lots of money through grants that happens through health happens through education happens through the immigration department and a range of others and I know through all of those grants programs there's a significant engagement with African communities. Okay Minister thank you very much.